Hi, I'm Roy Gonzarski. I'm the CEO of Alithion, and we're going to show you how we feature print items, meaning we're going to serialize what are non-serialized item, and then identify them, show how we fa find counterfeits, how we eliminate gray markets, and how we eliminate human error. So I'm going to do a demonstration versus a demo. The difference is software companies love to do demos, which are planned a month in advance. They all follow a tight script. You can't deviate. And the software is usually demo software. Uh, I, uh, some years ago, said I will never do demos again, only demonstrations. So we're going to do this interactive and live. Uh, we can try anything. If it works, great. If it doesn't, great. But you'll see the software that our customers actually use. So I'm going to do two things first. One, uh, on my app that I'm going to open up here, and I want to clarify that our software is not an app. The app is one way to access the software. Because I'm going to use a phone as an edge device. Manufacturers, for example, use an industrial camera as an edge device. So there they have software that sits on the industrial camera that runs it. It's the same software, it just depends on the edge device that you use, and then it goes back to our system in the cloud, in AWS in our case. So if I open up my app, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of everything in my database because I just did a series of these demonstrations earlier today. So I'm just gonna remove everything so that you can see I'm starting from clean sheet, right? Nothing has been pre-prepared. So that's one. Two, I'm going to use for this demonstration, I like these things, I bought them on Amazon, they're made in China, of course. These are powered mini USB or micro USB cards. You can use them for you know hobby stuff and so on. Uh, the reason I like them is one, they're super cheap. Two, I can travel with them anywhere I go, so it's easy to carry around. And three, they are so commoditized that there's no markings on them. There's no barcodes, QR codes, NFC, nothing to serialize one from the other. And I have two, four, six, eight, nine of them. So I'd like you, Alan, if you could, I need four of them for this demonstration. So why don't you okay. give me four? All right. Perfect. There. So I'm going to call these one, two, three, four for sake of demonstration. So imagine I'm the manufacturer of these. The first thing I need to do is I need to feature print these, meaning fingerprint them. We are the equivalent of what fingerprints are for people. So the reason governments don't trust your driver's license, pass, pa uh, passport, badge, rather they use biometrics is all of the proxies can be modified, manipulated, faked. So they use your fingerprints. You can't cheat with your fingerprints. We do the same. Instead of using a proxy, like a barcode, a serial number, a QR code, NFC tag, we use the actual inherent flaws, features, aspects of manufacturing that are already on this. So we don't have to add anything. So the first thing I need to do is just like I would fingerprint a person for the first time, I need to feature print the items. So I move my phone here to my feature print mode. And now I'm going to take a picture. I'll just turn on the phone light so you can see better on the screen what I'm doing. So basically I come here, I take a picture of this first one, and I'll call it number one for sake of example. And that's the process. A picture, and in this case, I added data. I don't even have to do that, but for demonstration, it's easier when I have it. Same thing with this one. This one I'm gonna take a picture and call number two. And I'll also say, for example, made in the USA. If you think of the CHIPS Act that came out that the government has to buy X percent of made, how do you know they're made in the USA? Because the sticker on the box said so. Guess where the stickers are made, right? So <laughs> let's say we put it embedded in the actual fingerprint. The third is we'll call this number three, and let's say uh, for CFM engines only. Make something up. And then this fourth one, uh, I'm going to say, uh, let's say this is uh, for the EU because they have their own requirements. So I'll call this one number four uh, for export, export to EU only. Again, for sake of example. So now I feature printed my four items, four, 400,000, four million, it doesn't matter. Now I could be at the end of the production line and I want to know, for example, for quality reasons, which one came through which line. Maybe I'm in the supply chain, I'm in shipping or receiving, and I wanna make sure I'm getting the right parts that I'm supposed to get. Maybe I'm the technician, I want to install a board on the aircraft, I wanna make sure it's the right board. Maybe I'm in warranty service, I'm getting back a part from my customer who's saying, hey, uh, fix this please. Doesn't matter what it is, it's always the same set of questions. Is this what I think it is? Is it real? Is it legal, not gray market? Is it correct and not a misidentification? And I want to know the provenance. Where's it been? Who's the last person that saw it, etc. So in this case, I'll move my phone to my identify mode. And now I need to identify. So which is the first one I should do between the one and four? Uh, do you want me to mix them up or do you want well, to... Well, we want to remember which is which. So just tell me which one to do. Okay, let's do uh, number three. Number three. So this should be number three. So I'll do the same thing. 
I'll take more or less a similar image, and now I'm going to ask the system, have we ever seen this before? And the answer is immediate. One, yes. This mm -hmm. is one of the four parts. It's identified. Then you can see here under label, it's number three. So not only have I authenticated it, I've identified it to the level that says number three, and it says what I said before for CFM engines. So if I'm now someone else that's not supposed to get parts for CFM engines, I know either someone made a mistake or someone didn't make a mistake and is trying to sell me the wrong part, but I can't get away with it. Also on the bottom, you see the provenance. So who, when, where, so I can even open up my geotag, where was this feature printed first? And then every time someone identifies it, I have another record. So since we started from scratch, I only have the one identified record. So if I were to go back, take the same part number three and do the same thing, take a picture, ask it to identify. Again, it's identified. It's number three and here's mm -hmm. my second identification record. Mm -hmm. Every time someone identifies it, it's recorded. No paperwork, no blockchain in the cloud, nothing. The system attaches to the fingerprint of this specific item, this data. Mm -hmm. So this was number three. So I'll mm -hmm. take number four. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the picture. I'm gonna ask it to identify. Say so it's identified. This one's number four. Mm -hmm. Even though again, they're all the same item, but I can tell the difference. So this one's number four, and this is the one for export to EU only. So if I'm now in Chicago, in maintenance and I'm getting this part, again, someone's either made a mistake or trying to sell me something illegally. Mm -hmm. So you can't get away with that. And just for now, fun, let's see what yeah. happens when you try to order, identify something that, is, that isn't registered. That is sneaky. I'm trying Even to sneak it in. Right? Yeah. So I'm trying to sneak it in, it's not identified. Uh huh. Even though it's the same, right? You picked which ones. Right. It's the same item, but just like with human fingerprints, you can't trick a twin, right? With a driver's license, I can trick you with my twin brother but my fingerprints are different. I can't trick you. Same thing. Now, one question that comes up is wear and tear. So let's take, I don't think we've done number two yet. So let's just make sure that way we cover all of them. So I'm gonna take a picture of number two. Let's see if we identify it. Yes, and it's number two. And this is the one made in the USA. So now I know for sure that part was made in the USA. So let's do some damage here. First, let's do some superficial damage, all right? Some markings, dirt, whatever it is. So now I'm gonna take a picture of it. And you can see this is literally the one I just marked up. I ask it to identify, it's still identified, it's still number two. And you can see the original image here on the right, clean, on the left is the one all marked up and I can still identify the difference. Now let's go one step further, excuse my pocket knife, uh -huh. and let's do some actual physical damage. So we'll break this off, we'll scratch Watch my fingers, and then we'll damage this thing. So we're basically bending it out of shape, if you mm -hmm. will. So clearly a damaged item. Let's add another scratch here just to make it interesting. <laughs> and now the question is, well, now it's gone through wear and tear. Will I still identify it? And you can see, I mean, this is right? The damaged item. System doesn't care. It's still identified. It's still number two. Mm -hmm. And this is the original. So imagine if I had to take a Sharpie and mark off the QR code, you'd be blind. Imagine if I took my knife and scratched off the serial number, you'd be blind. We don't care. Now, how is it that we can do this? Or the, feature, the fingerprint systems that governments use will use between seven to 11 or seven to 15 points of interest. If you ever watch Born Identity or CSI and see those dots on the fingerprints, right? They're looking for those dots. The really high-end systems will use 75 to 85 points of interest. We on this find 5,000 points on this thing, size of a fingerprint. And we actually stop at 5,000 because there's no added value. So we have so many redundant points that even when I mark them, break, crash, scratch, break off, I can still identify the authenticity and identification of this specific item. So no one can say, oh, well, you know, that's not the same item that you saw, it's different. Look, it's scratched up, yours wasn't. Nope, that's the same item. Or vice versa, I clean it up and you say, well, that's a used part, this is brand new, look, mine is shiny and you. Sorry, I can look through all the stuff that you've tried to buff away and still know that that's the same part. That's what we do.